Hi everybody, this is Shauna Odette from the Flying Cat Academy. Welcome to lesson number 53. In this lesson, we will teach the student about schwa on E. Let's begin by setting up the table. You'll need your top 160 sight word list, the sight word study method instruction sheet, the student's sight word pack, some blank cards for introducing new sight words, a highlighter, markers, and some pencils. For the short vowel drill, you'll need the teacher instruction sheet, the keyword pictures, and the keyword sentence. For the phonemic awareness drill, you'll need the teacher instruction sheet and the colored tiles for the student. For the visual drill and auditory drill, you'll need the teacher instruction sheets and the card pack for the student. For the syllable card drill, you'll have to have this one cut out and ready in advance with the syllable ones all on the left column, the syllable twos all in the middle, and the syllable threes all in the furthest column on the, on the right. You can scramble this or unscramble this as much as you think is needed for the student. Then we'll have the magnetic letter tile drills for reading and spelling. You'll need the instruction sheet for the teacher and the board with the magnetic letter tiles spread in a rainbow shape for the student. You'll have the syllable pounding instruction sheet, the new phoneme grapheme kinesthetic discovery sheet, and the sheets for the lesson, which include the scooping syllable sheet, there'll be a teacher answer key included as well, the single word list, the short story, and the three sentences for the writing portion of the lesson. In addition to all of that, you will have another drill. So you'll need to have the syllable card drill for reviewing the sound of schwa on the letter I set up as well. This is one that we did in the last lesson, set up on the table. This will be for the new content part of the lesson when we're introducing the sound that schwa makes on the letter E, which is uh, and you'll have it set up just like I've got it on the table here. In addition to all of that, you might have a timer and you'll need that if you've introduced fluency into the lesson. Let's begin with the sight word study method. Student, you're going to need your sight word card pack for this one. You'll read through all of the words on your cards, putting a check mark in the corner when you get one right, and teacher, you are ready with blocking strategies for if the student encounters difficulties. The student reads through all the words, and then the student hands the card pack to the teacher. Then it's the teacher's turn to read. The teacher reads each word and the student writes it down. When the student writes a word correctly, then in the other corner of the card, the student puts a check mark. Then you have a discussion when you're finished about which of those words has been mastered. If any of the words are mastered, then they leave the card pack. That leaves space for introducing a new sight word. The teacher will let you know if you have time to do that. It's time for the short vowel drill. This is where you need your keyword pictures and your keyword sentence. Once you've mastered the short vowel sounds, this will be discontinued from the lesson. So you take out your keyword picture for apple and you trace the shape with two fingers saying apple. Then you underline it and say ah. Do this for all the short vowels as many times as your teacher deems necessary. And then you'll take out your sentence and you'll read the sentence stretching out the vowel sounds as you do it. Let's do the funny awareness drill. You'll need your colored tiles for this one. Today we'll be using some long vowel sounds as, as well as short vowel sounds in this drill. We're getting close to starting the open syllable, so we're gonna get used to those long vowel sounds now. Take out a tile and call it B. Can you repeat that sound? Okay, take out a tile and call it O. Can you repeat that sound? Now tap it and say it. Did you get Bo? If you did, that's right. Take a new tile, call it t. Now tap it and say it. What's your word? Did you get boat, as in I was sailing in a boat? If you did, that's right. If that's boat, find the O sound in boat. Change it into an aw. What's your new word? Tap it and say it. Did you get bot? If you did, that's right. Find the b in bot. Change the b into a p. What's your new word? Tap it and say it. Did you get pot? If you did, that's right. Take a new tile and call it ol. Can you repeat that sound? Put the ol right after the p in pot. What's your new word? 
tap it and say it. Did you get plot? If you did, that's right. Great job. You can put your tiles away. Let's do the visual drill. Student, you're going to need your card pack for this one. The teacher flashes a card and the student says the sound. Here we go, ready? What are the two sounds of this one? Did you say th and th as in then and thump? If you did, that's right. Teacher, you can do about six to eight cards in this way and then come back to me. Let's do the auditory drill. We we'll use the same card pack that we used in the visual drill for this one. Student, your sound is j. Can you repeat that sound? Now what symbol or symbols can we use to write j? Write them down and say the sound again as you do it. And then underline the symbols and say the sound again. Did you say j or g can make the j sound? If you did, that's right. Good job. Teacher, do about six to eight cards in this way. It's time for the syllable card drill. You'll read down each column from left to right, and then read across each row making nonsense words as you go. Then it's time to unscramble things. As you unscramble the words, you'll read the whole word, and remember to discuss the meanings of the words and to put some of them into sentences. Let's do some syllable pounding. Student, you can stretch out your arm and you'll tap your arm every time you hear a syllable and your finger shoots out to indicate that. Or you could put your hand under your chin and your chin will hit your hand every time a syllable happens because the vowels, you're listening for vowel sounds when you're listening for syllables and the vowel forces your jaw to drop. How many syllables are in this word? Insistent. Say that word. Did you say three? If you did, that's right. How about this one? Hand. I hear one in that one. Volcanic. That one has three. How about vol? I hear one in that one. Let's do some scooping syllables. Student, I want you to take out your scooping syllables worksheet and, your and the instruction sheet for how to scoop syllables. Your teacher can lead you through this one. And teacher, you've got the answer key provided. We've been talking about this idea of schwa. Student, can you take out your rule card for schwa? You've actually got two cards on it. One is a picture of the different vowels and the sounds that they make when they schwa, and the other is the rule card for what is the schwa. Have a quick discussion with your teacher about what is the schwa. We know that when we schwa the letter A, we get the uh sound. We're going to review this by doing the drill that we used in lesson 50. Your teacher has this one set up on the table for you. We know that when we schwa the letter I, it makes the I sound, the short I sound, which is unexpected because it would we would think it would say I in an open syllable. So your teacher has this drill set up and you're just gonna read straight across and they're not scrambled in any way. And you're gonna, um, every time you get to the open syllable with the I, you'll say I instead of I. So that would be Dom I Nate. And you'll just read down. We've been talking about the sounds of schwa. Schwa is that tendency of when we speak, we insert unusual vowel sounds, ones that we wouldn't expect. Uh, and we do this as a way to speed up things. We often use uh because it's such a simple sound to make. So instead of saying a on a mid, we would say a mid. Instead of saying kit chen, when we're schwaing the e, we say that a uh sound again, and we, we, it comes out as kit chen. Say you want to go to the kitchen. Do you say kit chen, as you should, or kit chun? I, I know I schwa that one. I put the uh on chun. And when we schwa an oh, it's the same thing. We put that uh sound. So that would be bottom instead of bottom, bottom. And we know that when we schwa an I, that's the one time we're not adding the lazy uh. We're putting that short I sound instead, I. So we would say compliment. Although I have heard people say compliment as well. Uh, okay, so today we're going to focus on the sound that schwa makes on the letter E, which is uh. Let's take an example. 
this word has an open syllable to begin, so we would expect that to be E. And then we've got a nice closed syllable, so you can read that one as you normally would with this one saying EDI. So if you read this word correctly without schwein, you would have E, V, E, N, T, VENT, EVENT. I will go to the EVENT. But we know that when we talk about going to an event, we schwa it, don't we? So we have to know that the E is going to it is being schwa there, or else we would write it with a U mistakenly. When we schwa an E, we say a. Uh. Right now, you will work through the drill that your teacher has ready for you on the table, and you'll put the little schwa symbol on the E, and then you'll know that when you read that word, when you get to the E, you will say a. Uh. Now we'll do the magnetic letter tile drill for reading. Take out your cookie sheet with your letters spread in a rainbow shape. This is a two syllable word, so we'll spell it syllable by syllable. Your first syllable is I. Can you repeat that sound? Now find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. Okay, let's do the second syllable. The first sound there is T. Can you repeat that sound? Now find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. The next sound is a. Uh. Can you repeat that sound? Now find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. And the last sound is m. Mm. Can you repeat that sound? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. Now usually, we've been talking about how the schwa is usually found on the open syllable in multisyllable words. And that is true. In this word, it's actually the closed syllable that has the schwa. So you heard the uh sound, but it is not going to be a U. What do you think it would be? Did you spell it I-T-E-M? If you did, that's right. Good job. Teacher, you can do another word in this way if you have time. And when you finish, you'll move on to the single word list and then have the student read the short story. After that, if you've add, added a fluency piece, you'll do your timed reading. Do all that and then come back to me. Let's do the magnetic letter tile drill for spelling. Student, you'll need your cookie sheet with your letters spread in a rainbow shape for this one. Your word is compliment. Can you repeat that word? Now, how many syllables are there in compliment? Pound it out. Did you say three? If you did, that's correct. That was very good. I just gave you a compliment. So let's try and spell this word syllable by syllable. Com. What's the first sound that you hear in com? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. And what's the second sound that you hear in com? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. What's the last sound that you hear in com? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. The next syllable is ple. What's the first sound that you hear in ple? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. What's the next sound that you hear in ple? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. And what's the last sound that you hear in ple? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. Now let's do the third syllable, meant. What's the first sound that you hear in meant? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. What's the next sound that you hear in meant? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. What's the next sound that you hear in meant? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. And what's the last sound that you hear in meant? Find the correct tile and pull it to middle. Now tap it and say it. Say the whole word. Did you spell it C-O-M-P-L-I-M-E-N-T? If you did, that's correct. The second syllable, P-L-I, is an open syllable, so we would expect it to say ply. But we schwad it. We made it say its short I sound of pl. Okay, put those tiles away and get ready for a new word. Okay, this one is elephant. Can you say that word? I might say there was an elephant getting water at the river. Elephant. How many syllables are there in elephant? Pound it out. 
Did you say three? If you did, that's right. So let's spell it syllable by syllable. Your first syllable is L. What's the first sound, sound that you hear in L? And remember that every syllable needs to have a vowel. What's the next sound that you hear in L? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. And here's your next one. Your second syllable is uh. When we hear that uh all by itself in a syllable, ding, 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 our little spidey sense gets alerted that there might be something special going on there. So grab the correct tile and pull it to the middle. The last syllable is fant. And what's the first sound that you hear in fant? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. And I will tell you that this word is spelled with the symbol for f that we often associate with Greek words. Okay, what's the next sound that you hear in fant? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. What's the next sound that you hear in fant? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. And what's the last sound that you hear in fant? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. Now tap the whole thing and say it. Did you spell it E-L-E-P-H-A-N-T? If you did, that's correct. In that second syllable, we would expect it to say E-L-E-fant, but we don't say that. We schwa it and we say elephant. Elephant. Okay, great work. Now take out a lined piece of paper and a pencil and we're gonna do some finger tapping and writing of single words. Your first word is item. Can you repeat that word? I might say, I will put another item on the list. Okay, there's two syllables in item, so tap each syllable and then write down the syllables. Remember you're saying the, the sound of each as you're tapping it out. And then write it down. Teacher checks the work. And you can discuss the schwa that was happening in there. Okay, let's try another one. If I was saying this correctly, I would say event, but we tend to schwa this and we say event. So tap out each syllable and write it down as one word. Did you spell it E-V-E-N-T? If you did, that's right. Teacher, if there's time, you can have the student spell some more words, and if not, move right on to the writing sentences portion of the lesson. The teacher reads the three sentences, and the student chooses two that will be written. After the student writes the sentence, the student checks the work with chops. Let's do a quick review before you go. We've been learning about the different sounds of schwa. What sound does schwa make when we schwa an E? Did you say uh? If you did, that's right. What sound does schwa make when we schwa an A? Did you say uh? If you did, you're right again. And then, what sound does schwa make when we schwa an I? Did you say I, the short I sound? If you did, that's right. Why do we do this? Why do we mess around with the vowels in this way? Well, you could just say we're lazy and the uh sound is so simple to make. It's, one of, it's the easiest I can imagine. Um, so maybe we're just lazy. I do think it's a way that we can speed up these big words when we're saying the big words. So compliment takes a little bit longer to say than compliment. And I think that over time we just started doing that as a way to speed things up. Great job today. There's your compliment. This is Shauna Odette from the Flying Cat Academy.